Home Depot to get fence clips. Welcome back to Gibbs Adventures. Today we're out checking a few traps. I got 15 different uh, Martin Fisher sets out. Got an incidental uh, red squirrel in this guy. You can see one of the things I always try to promote a lot is see how my trap is completely out from the tree. It's not touching anything. It's not touching the ground. I've always strive for that because you don't want to have catch an animal and then have mouse damage or a bird peck it or something. So. By doing it this way and having a swivel in, in it, you minimize any sort of damage that you might occur. So you always want to stay ahead of the damage. One thing to catch something, it really sucks if it gets damaged after it gets caught. Today it's mild enough that I can easily uh, take this guy out of the trap. It's about zero today. Kind of a bit of a thaw that's happening. I'm out today to take advantage of that. It's always more fun to be in the bush when it's warm out. Better than 40 below. So I just have an outright miss here today, which happens once in a while. Not what we're looking for, but it is what it is. lure too much, eh? No, not potent enough. Trying out a new lure this year, some uh, Hellfire by Dunlop. But, uh, I'm not feeling the vibe right now. Now the reason I'm putting branches on the front of my sets like that is to try to stay away from non-targets, especially birds. The birds can peck at the back but if they go in by the trap, then I might catch them. So it's much better for me if I put a little couple branches over it. It doesn't stop at 100%, but it really cuts down on it. I got a little tree marking paint here. And what I want to do is mark my trails where I go off and on the lakes. Because when I first make my first trip of the season, sometimes I miss and then I go off into rhubarb. So I just want to try and figure out a way to make it so it works easier for me. So this way here, I got my trail marked really good. When I come down the lake, it's gonna be a lot easier for me to find my exit trail to the next pond. What I'm doing is going straight through the bush, kind of bush hopping here from pond to pond. So on to the next one. So I had a bear uh, come by and knock this tail off. Got some teeth marks in it. Handy tool, a cordless drill.
things you want to have is a very sturdy set. You don't want a flimsy set. You don't want it rocking around. You want it as solid as you can make it. So if you see what I mean, the set's pretty solid here. It doesn't rock around. That's what we're trying to achieve here. So critical to my success here is a fence staple that I drive in underneath. And now for quick change, I use a carbiner. Carabiner. Carabiner. Thank you, Case. So quickly goes on my trap. And then quickly goes on my pole here. And this, remember my always consideration is, big consideration is that swivel action because if you catch a, a, a non-target or you get a big fit dog fisher here, he's gonna spin that a little bit. So you want it to be able to uh, swivel. You shouldn't put a trap out with all the swivel. And like I said, quick, quickly drive one of these in and then you have a quick system. I can change the trap in seconds here. Good to go. Sucks to be me today. I caught my trap. And there's mink tracks all around the set here, so I'm gonna do a couple modifications. You can see you ran up the pole here. The pole's got tracks on it. But uh, I'm gonna put a nail in here. And the reason for the nail is just to make sure the bait doesn't roll ahead. This is a big, pretty big trap for a mink, so he might have just got around the triggers and then started pulling out the bait and got caught that way. So. Try to do something here to, to prevent that. Things don't always go as smoothly as you like on the trap line. You're always adjusting stuff, you're always trying to make it a little bit better, you're always trying to think it think it through so that it works better for you. Need a bit more bait. Of course, you guys see my old tip about everything being pink and orange. My axe, all my tools, helps me find them in the snow when I drop them. Let's throw a bit more bait in this set. So, so this is the type of lure I'm trying out this year. It's a Hellfire by a, by Dunlop. Long call smear, it's called. So I put it near my set on a branch. You want it to broadcast the smell to train the animal over to the set. Try not to put it in a spot where you're going to get it on your coat. Sometimes if you're not paying attention, if you put it too close, you're going to rub up and then you're going to smell like hellfire. Is that why the truck smells bad? That's one of the reasons, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a live beaver house. And one of the ways you can tell a beaver house is live without even walking up to it, is you can see all the wolf tracks that are circling around the house. They're checking it out. So in the fall, they would have been hunting the, the beaver. Now that they're frozen in, 
they can't resist coming by and they, they'll sometimes stop right on top of the house and have a leak or a dump or you smell the vent hole or coming out of the house. You can see the sticks from the feed bed, but you can see how the wolves have been circling around the house. Every time they come through their territory, they're going to check out a live beaver house. So it's a quick way to tell a live house from a dead house. They don't bother with the dead houses, but they'll check out a live house every time. I got a bit of flagging tape but flagging tape tends to blow down especially if you don't come down the same trail every year so just another just to say again how I'm gonna mark my trail so I can see it quickly the paint will last a lot longer than the flagging tape the paint usually lasts is three or four years pretty conservatively And you remember to make your paint spots pretty big. And this is this is actually log marking paint. They use for uh, scalers or use it for marking log. It just helps a little bit. <laughs> we have some auto tracks. You can see they pulled out and had a dump there. You see the traveling from pond to pond and they go around and they'll find a way to get under the ice to feed because they're after uh, small fish and frogs anything they can find buried in the mud or fish that they can eat anything they can eat on so clams all kinds of stuff and they make their living by traveling so they may not come by here again for a month but they will be back by here for sure and they'll almost go on the same trail again so case and i where are you just came out of the bush Stopped for a coffee on our way home. Kind of sucked today because we only caught a squirrel. Had, uh, what did we say, 15 sets and then we added two more. So, always the optimist when you're a trapper because you're always trying, thinking for the next trip. Put in a couple of sets, fixed a couple things, put, hung up some wolf snares, had a great day. Hope you enjoy it. Talk to you later. See you on the next one.